I'd like to go um, now and uh, have introductions from our presenters. So first we will start with uh, student involvement. Hi, okay. my name is Sarah Patrikas. I'm an assistant director in the Office of Student Involvement and Leadership Development. And next is Benenda Center. Mark? Hi, hey, uh, I'm struggling with my mute button there. Sorry, this is, um, <laughs> uh, that's what I got my PhD in. I'm Dr. Mark Wagner uh, from the director of the Benenda Center. Thanks, Mark. We all struggle with the mute button. We all do. <laughs> Next up is athletics. Hi, my name is Michael Mudd. I'm uh, just completed my sixth year as a director of athletics here at Worcester State University. Thanks, Michael. And next is campus ministry. Oh, Elizabeth. There we go. There you go. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Sternoy with campus ministry. And next up is career services. Hi, I'm Jillian Anderson. I'm the director of career services. And last but certainly not least, international programs. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Katie Palumbo and I am the Director of International Programs. Okay, thanks everyone for introducing themselves. And last but not least is our question moderator for the day. Hi everybody, Josh Katz, Associate Director of Community Standards and I work with the Orientation Program. All right. So as I mentioned before, um, several of you asked questions when you registered for um, parent orientation Zoom calls. So we'd like to go through those questions first and then we'll take any of your chat questions that you will put to the chat. So feel free to think as we're going through, if something comes to mind, feel free to put that in the chat. And real quick at the end, um, after we're done with questions, I will go over, even though I think both of you heard me already, uh, talk about first year orientation. Um, we will talk a, a little bit about that just to update you on where we're at. Okay, so why don't we get started? Josh, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, Sarah, you're up first. Um, <laughs> how can students find out what kind of clubs there are on campus? Great question. Um, so we have, I think, currently over 40 student organizations, um, and they kind of run the gamut from groups that plan events and plan programs for all of our students to organizations that are more specific towards like the criminal justice major or our nursing program. Um, so there's a wide range of things. We also do have four club sports, um, dance team, equestrian, cheer team, and men's lacrosse. So for all of the information about those clubs, you can actually go to our website. It's worcester.edu slash student dash involvement. When you're on there, you're going to see a link that'll list to, um, you know, click here to learn more about our clubs. And it actually lists all of the clubs and descriptions of what they all are. So that way, if you're looking at the list, for example, and you see Active Minds and you don't know what that is, it does give a little bit of a description for um, what that organization does. If your student is involved with something now, in high, or was involved with something in high school that they want to continue being involved with, um, or there's a group that they already know that they want to be a part of, they can actually reach out to our office and we can put them in contact with a current member. Uh, we also do typically have a fall uh, student involvement fair, uh, club kickoff is what it's called, and this where the groups all have tables and they talk about their group, so that's another way students can sign up. But our office is always happy to help your student make a connection to another student who's in one of our existing groups. Thank you, Sarah. We have another question for you. Are there a lot of events held on the weekends? So I think, I would say yes. So over the past <laughs> few years, we've actually made a combined effort, I think, between our office, um, residence life, some of the other offices across campus to try and make sure that there's something going on every single weekend. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's programming, you know, the 48 hours of Saturday and Sunday, but we try to make sure that there's something, whether it's a, um, we, we do like off-campus trips um, that leave from campus to different places. We'll have um, like little pickup sport games sometimes. We'll do Sunday night events that have like a winter theme, for example, there's novelties, sometimes there's a performance, um, and some of our student organizations do host events on the weekends. So I know it's a, it's a concern. A lot of students are like, oh, I've heard since there's so many commuters that nothing happens on the weekends, and that is not true. It's all about 
your student actually staying on the weekend so that they can see what's happening. Because um, if they stay on the weekends, then they're going to make friends with the people who are staying on the weekends, and those are the people who are putting on the programs. Um, so they kind of have to put in a little bit of effort on their own to find these events, but we do provide, I think, ample programming on the weekends for our students. Thank you, Sarah. Mark, the next couple questions are for you. Um, how can my student become a part of CLUES? Uh, okay, good question. Uh, CLUES is a living learning community that's generally um, limited to 10 men and 10 women uh, who live together on the second floor of Dowden Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, it is filled for this year. However, if a student is really keen on being part of that, uh, they should reach out to me. My email is right there on the screen. Uh, we have um, let that group swell to, you know, 22 or 24 at different times. So, um, yeah, we're filled for this year, but uh, always willing to negotiate. And the next question is, what is the best way for my student to do community service while balancing their first year at school? Okay, yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, we have programs where students, if they really want to uh, get involved in the Jumpstart program, for example, I see your question, uh, Alicia. Jumpstart is uh, a all, full year program. We go in, starting in late October, we go into preschools two afternoons a week uh, and do some preparation with the pre-K uh, group, getting them ready for kindergarten. It's a really terrific program. It is an AmeriCorps program. Uh, so it is um, organized by the federal government. Students who uh, participate in that uh, get a $1,300 Siegel scholarship uh, that is directly put towards their, their tuition. They can reserve that, by the way, for graduate school or whatnot. Uh, other students can, can use work study to be paid for Jumpstart as well. So, that's a good program for a student who really wants to be involved, really wants to stay busy. Uh, it is like having a, an internship uh, for the full year, uh, but we're also flexible. And um, yeah, it's been a really positive experience for a lot of students, Jumpstart. There's other one-off type of opportunities uh, like Earth Day, or um, we've done some travel as well through the Bonanza Center or a Habitat for Humanity build day. So there are experiences that are just one day, one off type of thing. So um, I hope that answers your question, Alicia. But again, uh, both about clues and Jumpstart, I would suggest that you can reach out to me. I can provide you with uh, uh, more information. But uh, both are terrific programs that I uh, quite enjoy running. And then Mark, how do you suggest they balance community service being their first year of school? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think that every student is different. Uh, some student, we've had students in Jumpstart who are 4.0 students. Uh, we've, I've seen other students who, you know, uh, community service is too much. They need to focus on their work. So it, it varies uh, student by student. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're supportive in, in every way we can be. Um, you know, it's really up to the students and their parents, I think, to really balance all that and, and, and how much they can get involved. Uh, but again, there's, there's things like um, done Make a Difference Day, we've done Earth Day, we've done Working for Worcester. Those are just four or five hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's not going to necessarily affect academics. Um, students who want to take on something like uh, Jumpstart or the Worcester State Civic Corps, they have to really think about uh, what they're getting into and what um, what they can what they can successfully do in addition to their academics. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Mike, does the Wellness Center offer nutrition classes? Well, the Wellness Center doesn't necessarily offer nutrition classes. I mean, there's plenty of venues, um, ways throughout campus to to get nutrition classes. I mean, the health and sciences classes. Uh, the department offers classes in uh, personal health, consumer health, health and nutrition. Um, Chartwells, which is our, our campus dining service, uh, they have an in-house registered dietitian who uh, they often offer various programming throughout the year at the dining hall, and they also have one-on-one -on -one consultations there. Um, you know, obviously in athletics and recreation, we have a number of opportunities from a fitness perspective. Uh, Zumba classes, yoga classes, things like that. But 
Uh, primarily, that is more a, a classroom environment through our education department. Um, Mike, how will you ensure equipment stays clean between uses during the COVID-19 era? Uh, well, as you can imagine, um, COVID-19 is pretty much 24-7 what we've been looking at uh, internally in athletics. Uh, there's there's kind of two different parts of that, I guess. You know, obviously you have the wellness center piece and the, the varsity athletic piece, so I, I'm not sure which uh, if, if you're alluding to both or, or just one or the other, so I'll cover both. Um, you know, in the wellness center piece, obviously, you know, safety and priority of our student athletes, faculty and staff is, uh, is a priority. Um, we've already uh, planned a, a robust cleaning program that we'll be putting in place to uh, ensure safety to everyone that comes into our venue. Uh, we're gonna be enhancing our cleaning measures, gonna be increasing staffing. Uh, we're probably going to be, we're looking at probably sh literally shutting down the fitness center a couple times a day for a half hour uh, to clean the whole place out inside and out. Um, so we're also looking at an equipment rotation plan uh, to, to just to keep things clean. So as you can imagine, this is a, a center of our attention right now. On the varsity side, varsity athletic side, uh, we're still determining what the status is of our fall sports. Uh, obviously, we canceled our spring season last year, which uh, was was a terrible situation to everyone involved in athletics and the campus community, our student athletes. Um, we, we hope to have a fall season. That's our goal to have a fall season. What that, that's going to look like is to be determined. Um, it's very possible we could have uh, a shortened season, just kind of keep a conference schedule so that we can control our who's coming in and out of campus more and things like that. But from an equipment standpoint, you know, obviously locker rooms are a concern. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to put our locker rooms online this year because when you're talking social distancing and cleanliness, um, you know, college students, as we know, uh, sometimes aren't the uh, uh, cleanest people at all times. And they're um, – so we're not even we, – we may literally not use the lock kit. We're going to – we may be having the kids almost be responsible for their own uh, equipment and – not mix it with other people's equipment and so forth. And obviously, hopefully they'll take care of it themselves. But um, how we transport our student athletes to games, uh, how we fan control, um, you know, there's, there's a million different things we have to look at. And that should all be sorted out, I would say, by about the 1st of July. We're, we're, we're kind of starting to fine tune things right now. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Elizabeth, do you hold office hours if my student needs to talk to somebody? We don't have office hours per se, uh, so I would say the best way to get a hold of somebody in a moment in the moment is to email, which is always on the website. That's the easiest way to just get a hold of somebody. There is a phone number for the Campus Ministry Center, so you could also call there, and um, somebody will get that message. But honestly, faster is probably the email. Um, once we're back on campus, students will get used to faces and we wear our uh, campus ministry shirts. And so they'll, they will get more used to who they're looking for. And there's somebody on campus most every day of the week. Um, so it starts to become a na more natural thing at that point. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Jill, as a freshman, what services are they able to use as they start classes in the fall? As a freshman, um, you can use any service that we offer. Um, and if anything, we encourage students to see us freshman year. Um, in <clears throat> services, we can help them find a lot of things that, um, you know, if they're trying to figure out what to major in or what to minor in or what kind of goes together for a certain job or what may, you know, kind of help them be a little more um, you know, experienced in their field, um, as well as starting to, you know, kind of lay out their path for what they want to do when they're completed their time at Worcester State. Um, and another question for you, Jill, is can your office help my student get an internship? Yes. <laughs> we, um, we assist students with finding internships. You have to have at least 60 credits in order to get an internship for credit. <laughs> However, you can do an internship your freshman year without credit. Um, and we assist a lot of students, you know, at different times throughout their um, tenure at Worcester State, just finding internships, whether that's, you know, 
going towards their their class curriculum, academic credit, or just for their own experience and you know moving forward in life credit. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, are there GPA or required class to be completed requirements in order to study abroad? So um, that's a great question. So yes and no. So for our full semester academic year and summer programs, uh, there is. A, a credit completion requirement of a student having completed 30 credits um, and then the Worcester State minimum credit requirement for study abroad is a 2.7 however that credit that uh, GPA requirement will vary depending on the program the student chooses typically the program's GPA requirement is a little lower at 2.5 we also run a series of short-term faculty led programs with our own faculty from campus um, and for that, there is no minimum credit requirement. So first year students are welcome to participate in those. Um, and typically the GPA requirement is a 2.5. Thank you. Um, that is all of the um, pre-done questions. We did have one in the uh, chat that I will ask. Uh, reminder to those, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, this question that came in the chat is from Mike. Mike talk a little bit about this golf simulator please that was a selling point for this person student to come to campus yeah uh, golf simulator uh, on campus uh, it's available to students um, you do need to book a tee time and um, you know it's a pretty busy place so you want to uh, get your get your tee time booked but it's, it's obviously available to our student athletes to our students and student athletes All right, thank you. Um, another question was, is uh, we were hoping that each person could talk a little bit about how COVID-19 will affect how your department works. Athletics? Yeah, it's gonna be for everybody. So Mike, oh. you wanna start. So how, and so the question was, how does how's COVID-19 work in our department? Like how, how, how will it affect how your department works? Oh, well, um, like I, sort of said a little bit before but you know obviously i don't want to go i won't go back into detail like i just did but obviously that's really what we're focusing on 24 7. Um, i think i addressed from a wellness center perspective we have a lot of great things in place where we feel this place will be as spick and span as anywhere on campus uh, and on the athletic side a lot's going to depend on our fall sports season and what sports we'll be participating whether it's whether it's all fall all 10 fall sports whether it's some of our fall sports uh, obviously, some sports are much easier from a social distancing perspective, uh, such as golf, tennis, cross country, uh, which I would consider much safer sports than the soccer's and the footballs, where there's constant, you know, rubbing up against the opponent and so forth. So uh, that's all being taken into consideration. Obviously, our health and welfare of our students, athletes, coaches, even the referees, everyone involved, fans, uh, is all going to be taken into strong consideration before we would definitely have active athletics. Thanks. Uh, Mark, how about, can you talk a little bit about it? Unmute yourself first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, I've <clears throat> been working on that. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, the Mass Department of Public Health uh, and the CDC uh, have issued guidelines uh, for everyone uh, across the board, including administration and staff of higher education. Uh, we have been looking into that uh, because we're planning some, uh, some COVID relief in summer two uh, out in the community. So uh, it's a very good question. We're paying attention to the guidelines uh, and uh, it is gonna affect community mm -hmm. service. Um, so for example, uh, we're doing some uh, outreach currently to the elder population. Uh, we're addressing uh, social isolation uh, among the elderly for Representative Kennedy's office. That's all digital, uh, all phone work and digital. And I imagine a lot of community service is going to take, um, take that direction in the near term. Katie, do you want to touch upon uh, international programs? Sure. Um, so kind of in line with what Mark <laughs> said, we will largely be Kind of instructed by the larger plan for the state universities as to how we move forward for the fall semester but we are still actively advising students on study abroad 
um, both for the fall and spring semesters. And we've moved to a virtual format, so we don't really anticipate the advising aspects of our programming um, to change. Elizabeth? Yeah, I would just say that I think I've been super, super impressed with Worcester State. I think they've taken the lead on getting information and passing information out. So I feel like we all are in a good place to, to do what we're doing in a safe way. For campus ministry, I don't think there's a huge impact here. Social distancing should be pretty easy for us. We can meet in smaller groups. That's not hard. Um, if it does get to, to, you know, if it goes more extreme, we spent the summer doing stuff online and all of spring we've been doing stuff online so that's always available to us uh, we do do retreats a couple of times a year and so that would be one thing that we'll just see how that goes that may change thank you jill for career services it was a little easier transition where a lot of our um, offerings and things are already online so once your student gets there um, their one card number and can log in and everything and have an ID and password, then they can access all of our, you know, kind of online materials. We are also doing appointments through Zoom, through Google Chat, through Hangout. Um, so we continue to see students and we will continue no matter what kind of the, the future brings um, for those students that want to see us in person. And if we're allowed, then we will be there. And um, for those that don't, we will, you know, still continue to meet virtually. Um, with regards to job fairs and things like that, um, we have already transitioned from like, um, the end of spring to doing some of our events um, as well as our job fairs virtually. Um, I will say it's it's a different platform. It's a you know it's a different experience for a student, um, but we are definitely still kind of networking and putting students you know in touch with people that they want to be in touch with. Thank you, and Sarah. What about OSELD? Um, so we kind of have like three different areas that we've been talking about um, for our office specifically, you know, we're probably going to have a little less students coming in and out, but that means we're going to be trying to reach out more to them um, to make sure that they find some way to get involved, whether that be like a club, an athletic sport, an intramural sport, community service project, whatever that is, because we know that having that like one thing on top of their classes helps them better connect with the university. So. June and July for us is kind of figuring out how we're going to do that because um, we're working on like the orientation stuff right now, but it's figuring that out um, for our events. It's deciding, you know, what is that maximum amount, maximum number going to be for events in certain spaces. Can we have our smaller events. Um, if it was come and paint a mug on a Friday night, maybe now they can take it back to their room or they can take it home and drop it off later. So making those kinds of changes, depending on what social distancing rules um, are in place. For our clubs, it's providing support for them um, and saying, okay, well, how can you take what you do as a club and move it online if it has to go online? Um, people in our office have been putting together a list of different virtual resources that clubs can use so that they can put their events online. Um, how do you recruit new members? Because if we are distance learning or things are different in the fall, um, you know, maybe we're not going to have that club fair. So how can our first year students especially find out about all the different clubs that we have? Um, and then lastly, our leadership programs. Um, we do offer a variety of leadership programs throughout the year. Some of those I think can translate to an online version easier than others. Um, but it, again, it's trying to figure out how we can offer the same or get the same outcome, I think, for this, or students will get the same outcome, even if our programs have to change and how they're delivered a little bit. So we're kind of in the the working phase of figuring all of that out, but but we're hopeful that we can still provide, you know, quality involvement opportunities for all of the students. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Christy, at this point, we have no more questions in the chat. 